whatever you want to play, I want to make it happen for you. Hey everybody, welcome back to You Choose Tunes, the place where you pick the music and I transcribe and teach it to you. If this is your first You Choose Tunes video, be sure to check out the other videos on this channel, which includes a short introduction video to learn how You Choose Tunes works. This month's song is Montero, Call Me By Your Name by Lil Nas X. The song was super fun for me to transcribe, so I hope you enjoy it as well. When I looked at the finished transcriptions to figure out what I would focus on in this video, I realized that this was the perfect culmination of things we've worked on in previous videos. Things like articulation, switching from duple to triple subdivision, and syncopated rhythms that appear in this song have all been covered in previous videos. So for this video, we're going to switch it up a little bit and we're going to focus on some smaller details and learn a few fingering tricks. That being said, this will be the last You Choose Tunes video until the fall. This is a really good song to bring everything together and the break will give me a chance to evaluate what's been done so far and figure out how to come back bigger and better than ever in the fall. I still plan on sharing shorter videos and transcriptions, so don't worry, I'm not ghosting you. But for now, I'm really excited to dive into the nitty gritty of this song, so let's go. First, we're going to review the key of the piece and play through some exercises to make you more comfortable with playing in these tricky keys. Then, we'll learn some new fingerings that are applicable to both the E-flat and B-flat transcriptions before diving into some more specific fingering tricks that only appear in one of the parts. Feel free to skip around in this video to the material that applies to your instrument, but remember that as a saxophone player, these tricks will work no matter which horn you're playing, and you never know when you might be able to use them in the future. The original key of the piece is A-flat minor, which has seven flats. Luckily for us, saxophones are not concert pitch instruments, so our keys are a little easier, but they're still the most difficult keys we've played in so far. I decided not to change the key of the piece because I want you all to be able to play along with the recording of the song if you want to, because I always enjoy doing that too. The key for B-flat instruments is B-flat minor, which has five flats, D, E, A, D, and G-flat. For E-flat instruments, the key is F minor, so it has one less flat, B, E, A, and D flat. So don't let the key signature deter you. We're going to focus a little more on the key this time so that way you get more comfortable playing in it. So first things first, we'll play the scale up and down like we usually do. Next, we're going to play the minor pentatonic scale. All we have to do for that is remove two notes, the second and sixth scale degree from the minor scale. Yay, less notes! The majority of the song is pentatonic, so we'll remove the two notes that appear less frequently and focus on the notes that we do play. thing we're going to do is play a short exercise that I created. This exercise will prepare you for some notes and rhythms that you will see in the transcription. All right, so here's our tempo. Pretty close to the tempo of the song. And one, two, three. <laughs> Now we're going to move into some of the smaller details in this song. First, we're going to talk about being flexible with which B-flat fingering you use. There are many ways to play B-flat on the saxophone, but the most common are bis and side. You only need to use one finger to play bis B-flat. So using your first finger, you're going to cover the B key and the small key underneath of it. I went over how to play side B flat in the Mad at Disney video, but just to review it quickly, all you have to do is play an A and then add the bottom side key on your right hand. Most saxophones prefer one B flat fingering over the other, but it's important for you to be comfortable using both so you can play fast passages using the best fingering. This B flat allows you to move smoothly away from notes that use your right hand, say F or E, for example. I would use bis in that situation so that way I'm not worried about moving my right hand to the side key. We can see an example of when I would use bis here. This is measure 22 of the E flat part or the very first measure of the B flat part. 
On the other hand, side B flat is great for when you're moving around notes that only require your left hand, like G, A, and C. For example, I would use side B flat in measures 27 to 29 of the E flat part and measures 6 and 7 of the B flat part. It's important to look at the notes surrounding the B flat to decide which fingering you're going to use. So for example, it looks like I'm contradicting myself in the example that I chose for the B flat part. However, I think it's more important to get a smooth transition from the B flat to C, which we would risk not getting if you're switching between this B flat and C. Of course, these are just my opinions on which fingering I would use and where. You certainly don't have to take them. My point is just to be flexible and use both. In case you want to practice using the fingerings that I would recommend, I've included two copies of each part in the download. The first copy is just the music, while the second copy includes notes about which fingering I would use and where. This copy will also include notes about other fingerings I will introduce in the video, so you remember to try new things while you're practicing. I always write in which B-flat fingering I'm going to use in my music, so you'll get a good look at what some of my music might look like. So now we're going to go over some quick fingering tricks for the E-flat part since they are related to B-flat fingerings that we just went over. There are some instances where you can lift less fingers and still get the desired pitch. Less movement means you can play faster and smoother. First, let's look at beat 3 of the pre-chorus. This one is pretty easy, so instead of lifting your first finger and the right side key, you can just lift your first finger and still get a C. So you can leave the side key down and minimize that movement. The other easy trick appears in measures 30 to 32. We're going to use this B flat here. So when you go from A flat to B flat, all you have to do is lift your second and third fingers. You can leave the A flat slash G sharp finger down. This is great news because for most players, our pinkies are a little slower than the rest of our fingers and leaving the pinky down decreases the likeliness of wrong notes. All right, so now we're gonna move on to some different tricks we can use in the B flat part. We're also going to look at measures 30 to 32. Moving from E flat to B flat can be really clunky because you're going from a note that uses no fingers to a note that uses almost all of your fingers. If all seven fingers don't move together, you could really be in trouble. So when we start this passage with the D flat, we're going to finger an E flat and remove the first two fingers. This way, you're still playing a D flat, and when you go to the E flat, you're only putting two fingers down instead of seven. The next fingering trick we're going to learn is going from E flat to F. Again, we just want as little finger movement as possible. So take a look at beat three of the pre-chorus. To go from E flat to F, all we're going to do is lift up your middle finger on your right hand. The last alternate fingering we're going to learn is one of my favorites, fork F sharp or G flat. This fingering allows us to play an F natural to an F sharp or vice versa without the risk of adding an E in there or creating unnecessary flubs. To play fork F sharp, you would finger an F natural and put down this little key here with your right ring finger. There's a lot of chances for you to try to do this fingering in the song as it's in the chorus, specifically the third beat of the first bar of the chorus. You can use this fingering every time a G flat appears in the song, but be careful about using it outside of this song. Because you're using your ring finger to play the side key, you cannot move from side F sharp and then move to a D or D sharp. But it's a great fingering for moving chromatically from F to F sharp. You certainly don't have to use these fingerings to play the song, but if you can get past the possible initial dislike of learning new fingerings, I think you'll find the song much easier to play. I should also mention that most of these fingerings are what we consider to be alternate fingerings. They should really only be used in faster passages because their tone may not be as good as the normal fingering. So don't go changing your normal fingerings, just use these when you would have to otherwise coordinate a lot of fingers in a fast passage. Alright, so we covered a lot of ground in this video. We reviewed the key of the piece and played some exercises to get used to playing in more challenging keys. We went over the two main B-flat fingerings, and we learned lots of new fingerings that will allow you to play fast passages smoothly. While I'm sad that this will be the last longer video for a few months, just know that You Choose Tunes will be back better than ever in the fall. Thank you to everyone who has supported me in this journey so far, and to all of the saxes out there, I hope you have and will continue to enjoy the music that I've been able to share with you. So without further ado, here is a recording of me playing the transcription so you can have something to reference while you practice. 
All right, so here's our tempo. I'm gonna give myself three beats and then come in. So one, two, three. <laughs> Thank you. 